So now let's take a look at creating a new activity for your Android project and then launching that activity. The first thing we need to do is create a new activity. We're going to, in this case, use the new activity for a help screen for our application. You could use this in any time in your application where you want to go to another screen from one activity to another. In this case, we're going to just go ahead and from our main activity, our goal will be that we're going to make it so that a user can click a button and they'll go to the help so that we can provide a help screen there where they can read instructions about the application. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is create a new activity. There's no built-in Eclipse thing here. We can't go File, New, and then there's there's not activity. If we go to Other, uh, there's Android Project, Android Test Project, Android XML file. So what we have to do here is manually create this. We can create it under our namespace, the com.protein tracker. All we have to do here is go to New, and then we're going to do New Class, and then we'll call this help activity. But what we can do to make things a little simpler is we can make the super class be activity since we already know that that's that we're going to create a new activity class. And then we should have it extending activity. We, I did control shift O here again to do the auto import here so that it knows what activity is. So help activity extends activity. We do need to add something here. We need to do at override. And then we're going to do on create. And this is important because all Android activities need to implement this on create method. It's, it's going to be the first thing that's called when your activity is launched, if you remember from the application lifecycle or the activity lifecycle. So we're going to call on create here. And then I'm actually going to show you how to create a text view if you didn't have a layout. So we're just going to create a raw view and put it right into the activity and show that. So let's let's go ahead and create a text view. And then let's this will be a new text view. And we have to specify a context here. In this case, the context is going to be what what context is this happening under? In this case, our activity actually acts as a context, so we can just use this. And then let's give the text view some text. We'll do set text. We'll put in here some help text. And now we have to add this to the activity. So we can do this dot set content view, and we can just add a view directly to to the activity, which in this case is a text view. And if you're wondering what I'm doing here, this set content view, if you look at our main activity, you can see that by default, when we created this project, Android had created this activity and it set the content view to a layout file. You can set the content view to a layout file, which contains controls or views in it, or in this case for help activity, we're just going to set it directly to a text view. So what we're expecting to happen here is that if we were to launch this help activity, we would see a text view and it would have the text, some help text on it. So now we've created our new activity and we've got our control on there in order to view the text, but we need to do two things here. First, we need to make sure that this help activity is added to the Android manifest. This way that Android knows that this activity belongs in our application. And then second, we need to actually launch this so that we can see it and verify that this worked. So first, let's go ahead and go into our android.xml, our manifest file. You can get here from the project just by going to your android Android manifest.xml. And we have this pro our protein tracker manifest. And I'm on the application tab here. We could edit the raw XML, but I'm going to show you how to do it from here since this is a pretty easy thing to do from this menu. We can go and in our application nodes, I'm going to click add and we're going to make sure that we're creating a new element at the top level in application and we're going to create a new activity because that's what we added here. And click OK. And then this activity for the name, I can browse 
and you can see help activity is here. So once I select that, then we don't have to change any of this stuff for now. But once I save this file, now we have our activity added to the manifest file. If I look at the XML, you can see now that we have our application tag, we have our main activity that had the main and launcher, and then we have another activity added that is named help activity. So now Android knows about our activity. So the next thing I'm going to do here is actually launch our new activity from our old activity. In order to do this, we'll need to go into our old activity. Actually, we're going to put a button first. Let's go ahead and do that. So let's create another button here right below it. And let's give this one an ID. We'll call this help button. And then let's go ahead and change the text here just so it says help button. And I'm going to create a string here in our string resource file. Help, and we'll call this help. Okay. And now we have a button called help that we can click and we're going to set up the click to launch that other intent. So if we save this and then we go into our main activity, first we need to get a reference to that button. So let's do that button. This is help button. And then we're going to do find view by ID r dot ID dot help button. And now we'll do help button dot set on click listener. And we'll, let's create a new one here called help button listener. Okay, and then we're going to let Eclipse help us out here by creating a field. And then on our help button listener, we're going to do a new on click listener Eclipse auto generates this for us. And then what we need to do in our on click here is basically create a new intent that is going to tell Android to launch our activity. An intent is a way in Android for us to say, this is what I want to do, I want to do something. And because the Android OS is a disconnected model. It's basically a set of services. It's going to take that intent. It's going to decide what it should do with that intent. In this case, we're going to be pretty specific. We're going to say, hey, I want you to launch this specific activity and this is the class. So the Android OS isn't going to really have much of a decision to make. But there's a lot of other ways we can use intents. And so even though in this case it's very specific, it's just good to know that an intent is really an intention to do something and Android will decide what it will actually perform. We can create a new intent here. We'll do intent equals intent equals new intent. And then we're going to pass in the context, which in this case we need to do main activity dot this. Remember the activity is a context. And in Java, when we do main activity dot this, it's a way to reference the outer class because we're to, we're basically creating an inner class inside here. We need to reference that this that is that this that is in that we are inside. So main activity dot this, and then we're going to tell it which activity to launch. It's help activity dot class. And so now we have our intent. So now in order to launch our intent, all we have to do is call start activity, and then we pass in our intent. And it's really that simple. Now let's go ahead and test this out and make sure it works. So if we go to run, and then we can run our application, we'll switch over to the emulator to watch it launch here. We can see we have our new button help. And when we click this, now we're going to the new activity. So we've launched this new activity. And if I hit back, we can see we're back at the other activity. Help brings up the new activity. One other thing that we're going to want to look at here is the other way we can launch an activity. We're not going to go too far in depth here, but sometimes you're going to want to launch an activity and you're going to want to get a result back. There's another method we can use that is start activity for result. And we'll pass in an intent in a request code. And what you can do is actually get back some information from the other activity you launch in order to do something like let's say you launch an activity that wanted to grab an image or take a photo, 
you could launch this activity and then get back that image from the activity. But we're, that's a little bit more of an advanced topic. We're not going to go into that right now. There's one last topic we need to talk about in dealing with Android activities, and that is the saving and restoring of instance state. I talked about before how in the life cycle of an Android activity, we had various points where the activity could be destroyed and then need to be recreated. Now, when this is happening, the user doesn't really know that this is happening. To them, they just launch your application. They expect it to be where they left it. They don't realize that when they open another application and come back to your application, that Android may have killed your application. And because your application can be killed, it's going to lose all of the information that it had in memory. So, for example, if you're in your application, the user had filled out some text in the text box, and then your application was destroyed, and then the user came back to your application, that text from the text box would be gone because your application would have to be recreated or your activity would have to be recreated. So Android provides for us a mechanism that we can use in order to save the state of the activity. It will actually call a method on save instance state right before our activity is about to be destroyed by the operating system. And then when our application is recreated, you can see that the onCreate takes a parameter the, which is a bundle that is the saved instant state. And we can get something out of the saved instant state and restore our activity to the state that it was. So let's look at real quick how we can utilize this so we can see how we can save some state before our application is destroyed and then restore that state. So I'm going to override that method. I'm going to override on save instant state. And what I'm going to do here is state this bundle that we're given this out state is essentially it's it's basically a bag that we can put things into. One good way to think of this as like when you're going through the airport metal detector and you grab one of those bins and you put your keys and your wallet and all your metal stuff in the bin. And then when you come through the other side, you get to pick it all back out and put it in your pockets. That's what this bundle is. This bundle is our bin. So in our bin, we can put whatever we want in our for our application state. And this is going to be data that is important for the view for restoring the state of our application, but not settings because settings are going to be something that we're going to want to store for the long haul and not something that we're just going to restore for this particular instance of an activity. So we're, this is really instance state. At this point in the activity, what is the state that we need to store in case it were destroyed and, and was recreated? So in order to store something, we can do out state dot put string and you can do whatever type you have and you have to use a key. So in this case, let's make our key ABC and a value that we'll store in here is test. Okay, so now we're actually going to store this whenever our application is destroyed when Android says, Oh, I'm about to do something you might want to save your state. Okay, so we save under the key ABC, the string tag or test. So now when our application is recreated, we're going to want to restore that state. To demonstrate how we can do this, what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and check to make sure that we have some state to restore. So if saved instant state does not equal null, then we can go ahead and, li and let's just log this string out for now, just to show that we've actually gotten it. So I'll do this log.d and then the tag will be protein tracker. And then we're going to, for our message, do saved instant state get string. And remember our key is ABC and we're expecting that it's going to pull test out every time. So now we can run our emulator and then what we're going to do in order to simulate this is remember I said that if you rotate the screen, it's going to destroy the application. So normally we would lose this data if if we rotate the screen. So in this case, we'll just rotate the screen and let's see what happens. So I'll run our application. Okay, and our application has launched. And then I'm actually going to let's check our DDMS to make sure that 
there's no message in there yet. And you can see there's no message in here because we didn't actually restore the state because there was no state to restore. But if I hit Control F12, which is the shortcut to uh, do a rotation in the emulator, you can see it's rotated and it's actually destroyed our activity and recreated our activity. And now when I look at the DDMS, we see protein tracker test. So what's actually happened here is that we've actually had when we rotated it on save instance state was called we put into the bundle under the key abc the word test and then when the application was recreated when it got automatically relaunched we did actually have a saved instance state since we had saved it and then we pulled that value test out of the saved instance state by specifying this key abc and then we put it out to the to the log screen now one thing to keep in mind here is that you won't actually have to do this very often. I showed you how to do this here, but one nice thing is if you notice here, we call the super on save instance state and then the super on create. Android is by default going to save the state of all of your views. So all the views already implement a method that will that serializes their own state. So you don't even really have to worry about this in the case of the data that's on a view. Where you might have to worry about this is if your activity has some kind of data that you use to generate multiple uh, pieces of data on your view. For example, let's say that we had some, some data that populated three fields on our view. We wouldn't necessarily want to save the state of those three views because those views are generated from some data inside our activity. In that case, we want to explicitly save our activity's state of, of that data and then restore it. But if you ever have to do that, and you might not have to, then you're going to want to override on save instant state, and then in on create, you're going to want to pull out the state data.